With the Vancouver Canucks heading into the offseason, we get updates on the Zadorov contract and we also get more info on Elias Lindholm's possible contract as well. We'll get into this later on this episode, but before I start, to thousands of you watching that aren't subscribed, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. We'll be giving you updates from all around the Canucks for the rest of the offseason into next year. So if you don't want to miss another episode, make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button. But we'll hop straight into the first thing, which is just the Canucks do have a lot of UFAs, RFAs, and not a ton of draft capital going into this year's draft. If you want to have a look through this, you can. Obviously, you have uh, some UFAs in Lindholm. And Sidorov, which gets us into just the whole fact that Elliot Freeman was on the Donnie and Dolly podcast and he said they will talk to Lindholm's agent and ask what it will take. Is it possible? Maybe not, but they will try. They know the a price on Sidorov. With the Canucks, expect the unexpected, which gets us into our first topic today, which is the Sidorov contract. Now, I'm not going to go into this too deep because if you watched the video from two or three days ago, Obviously, we got an update from Shiravelli, Frank Shiravelli, that is on a podcast saying Zadorov thinks he can get six by six. He doesn't see how this would work, making Elias Lindholm's contract just manageable on the Vancouver Canucks. But when you do look at Zadorov on his own, he put up 14 points in the regular season in 54 games, obviously throwing 124 hits, five goals, nine assists in the playoffs. He had four goals, eight points. He was a plus three, 45 hits. 18 block shots in 13 games played. Now, Zadorov is coming off a two-year deal that he did sign with the Calgary Flames just two seasons ago where he signed for $3.75 million. And at the age of 29, looking at a 6x6, yes, it would be a little rough getting a 6'6", 250-pound enforcer defenseman that can still put up points and do everything else for you. But obviously, $6 million is going to make things tight, especially with the Canucks having this many guys assigned and only roughly $25.7 million to work with. And Griffin, what's your thoughts on this just briefly on how you think Sidorov's contract would look if he did sign the 6x6? I think Zdorov's contract would look pretty juicy for him on his end. I know he's looking for a decent amount. And the Canucks have been willing to have been able to make things work that we haven't really expected them to make work. So it'd be interesting to see how Alvin can make that happen. Uh, it would be nice to keep Zdorov for a bit longer. If we saw the production that he put out in the regular season and the amazing production in the postseason. We've seen him, how he was able to be a physical presence and also a goal scorer when they needed it. And as well, just to stir the pot and get a little spark going on, uh, just as far as morale goes with just sparking up a little fight or just chirping a few guys here and there. His energy is always there. You can feel it on and off the ice and it's always palpable with him. It would be nice to see them be able to get him in there and keep people like Lindholm and Joshua. There's going to be a lot of ways that they have to make it work. There's going to be a lot of numbers moving around, a lot of dead space to get rid of, a lot of trades to be made. But I don't doubt that the Canucks are going to make that happen to keep Zadorov because of his production and that they don't have too many big bodies on the team aside from him. So keeping a guy like him is critical and also going out and getting another big body to go with him is also another big piece as well. Yeah, because the big thing with Zadorov, and I always just kind of preach this, I probably haven't preached it enough, you can teach skilled players, obviously you can't teach someone to go out and be Connor McDavid, but you most certainly cannot teach someone to be six foot six, 250 pounds. This is a hard just type of player to come by, and the Canucks do have one in their lap that is a UFA. So obviously bringing them back is going to be one of the top priorities for the Canucks, but the problem with this is it does cause a Elias Lindholm contract situation. So like this tweet says, they want to get Elias Lindholm. They will talk to his agent. They want to see what it takes. Is it possible? And maybe it won't work, especially with the price on Sidorov. But when you do just have a look at Elias Lindholm as a player, when he first came over from the Vancouver Canucks, he was came coming over as an all-star. In Calgary, he had nine goals, 23 assists for 32 points in 49 games. He did kind of struggle with the Canucks when he first came over. 26 games, played six goals, six assists, 12 points, minus six. But he's always going to be one of your top defensive guys and a guy that you can trust on the defensive end and on face-offs if you want to look at the face-offs and just have a look at the stats. You can pause and look. The big thing with Lindholm was the playoffs. In 13 games played, matched up with the top competition of guys like Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, anyone you can think of, he was matched up with them. In 13 games, 5 goals, 5 assists, 10 points, plus 4, winning 51.2% of his draws, 36 hits, 16 blocks. 
this guy was an animal in the playoffs. And Griffin, what's your thoughts on maybe losing him if you do bring Zadorov back? It would be a really tough loss losing him. We saw that, like Zadorov, he was another big addition from Calgary that put up a lot of production, not only in the regular season, but the postseason as well. He was the only one injecting life into this power play along with Brock Besser. And we saw what they were like without Besser. So to see what they would be like without Lindholm as well, and if Besser is expected to make a longer recovery than anyone would have expected. It will be tough to see how that power play will look without Lindholm and Besser there. But keeping Lindholm, you got to make it work however you can to keep a guy like him because of what he was able to do. It will be tough, but if they're able to make some trades, like I said, they will be able to make some things work. But if it's going to make it work for that situation exactly, that's unsure. But again, they do have a lot of players that they can get rid of. Uh, not Not a ton, but they do have... A few here and there, we've kind of touched on who those guys might be that could be potential trade block candidates that could help free up some space to keep a guy like Lindholm. Yeah, because the big thing with Lindholm, and when you kind of look at this list of players, obviously you have some big names. Teddy Bluger was a great piece for the Canucks. Josh uh, Dakota Josh was a guy you must bring back. You have guys like Zadorov, Myers. But the biggest thing with Lindholm is this guy can play in your top six on the wing, center he can get it done at either position in your top six your middle six he's going to be paid as a top six guy but the biggest thing with a guy like Lindholm as well he can play your top power play unit like you said and also anchor down your top defensive unit so bring them back a player that's a Swiss army knife in every aspect in my opinion is a quite a big ask and they do need to get him back Obviously, Lindholm's coming off his $4.8 million contract that he also signed with the Calgary Flames. Just before recording this, I was just kind of just looking at it and wanted to see the contract comparables. You can see at the top of the screen. When clicking on it, when he signed this contract, the closest comparables to his contract is JT Miller. Now, obviously, JT Miller signed his deal with Tampa Bay Lightning before being traded to the Vancouver Canucks. He came into the Vancouver Canucks with having not his best performances, but then he did follow up just before signing, putting up 82 points. So he did sign his $9 million deal. And this kind of makes me think a guy like Lindholm could bring in maybe seven, six and a half, six point two five over a six, seven, eight year deal. Only issue with this is, is a guy like Lindholm is 29 years old as well. So you don't really want to lock up all this term and money into two guys that would be in their 30s, 35, 36 years old. And what's your just kind of thoughts on what Lindholm might get paid? That's a mighty sum to pay a guy of that age, like you said, and especially with two guys in critical position for the Canucks that are key uh, components of that roster. But it would be very worrisome in some aspects to have two guys that are that old in those getting paid that much when there's a lot of young potential coming up through the drafts in the coming years. And we know that Vancouver doesn't have too many early draft picks this year. They might find a golden nugget later on in the draft. But in later years, they're going to have earlier draft picks and they're going to want opportunities to jump on those guys and develop those players like they've developed players like Shelovs and uh, Lekaramaki and uh, Baines as well with Abbotsford. So... It's really a really a question of do we want to win the cup now or do we want to win cups to, for years to come? So the window is just opening for Vancouver, but the way they have to play this, they have to play this very right if they want to keep that window open for a few years or if they want to have it closed for another few years before it opens again, maybe. Yeah, that's the thing. You don't want to lock up all this money into these old guys. And like you said, kind of close your window when they hit the age of 33, 34. Then you're kind of anchored down with these contracts. The Canucks have always dealt with this. I mean, OEL is the one that pops up in recent memory. Obviously, a guy like McCabe, you might have to attach draft picks to. But if you could bring back Lindholm for maybe a $2 million raise on a guy like McCabe, so bring them around $6 million, then you can sign Zadora for Myers money. It doesn't sound so bad with the cap kind of raising the season, raising the year after that it will help over time but what's your guys thoughts on this how much would you give Sidorov would you rather sign Sidorov or Lindholm and how much do you think you would sign Lindholm for but with that let's hop into everyone's favorite topic today which is comment of the day and the comment of the day comes from Ernie Ballsting he says great channel keep it going 
All right, keep it up, boys. Go Canucks, go. Shout out to you, Ernie, for watching the videos. If you enjoyed this video and you want to leave a comment, you could be featured on the next episode of Canucks Digest as comment of the day. But if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to go down and leave a like, comment, share, subscribe, share whatever you want with your friends. Hopefully they enjoy the episodes too. We'll be covering everything around the Canucks for the rest of the offseason into next season. But I've been your host, Mark, with my co-host, Griffin. Take care.